Welcome to the Hudson Valley Regional Food System Map. In this tutorial, I will go over the basic and more advanced features of the map, as well as give a few tips and tricks. When you first open the map, you should be centered on the nine counties in the Hudson Valley region. If you're centered on a different location and want to go back to the original extent, just click the home button here. Above that are the controls to zoom in and out. And below that is the option for the map to find your current location. You can also find any location by typing in its address in the search bar. In addition, you can navigate the map using bookmarks. Click on any of the preset bookmarks to be sent to that location's extent. If you want to go back to the original Nine Counties view, click on Hudson Valley here. You can also add your own custom bookmarks. First, zoom in to your area of interest. Click Add and then name the bookmark accordingly. To delete a bookmark, just click the X here. To the left of the bookmark panel is the base map gallery, and here you can change the view of the map. And to the left of that is the option to print the map, to share a link to the map, and to read more information about the map. Open to the right of the map is a panel with a list of data layers that you can add to the map. Each of the data layers are organized by theme according to the gray headings. Click on the gray headings to collapse and expand the different layer lists. To turn on a layer, click on the checkbox to the left of the layer name. You can click on the layer name to see a preview of the layer symbology. Right now I have the farms layer turned on and by clicking on any of these points, I can see more information about each of the different farms. So to expand this pop-up, I can click right here on the top right and collapse by clicking the same. If I want to zoom to that point, click zoom to on the bottom left corner of the pop-up. Note that some points may partially or completely overlap, such as over here. If that is the case, you'll see this counter on the top left corner and an arrow will appear that will allow you to flip through the different pop-ups. Note that all the features or points in all the food and farming layers are also searchable by name via the search bar. So for example, if I want to find a bowed farm, I would type it in here and then click the name under the farms heading and it will bring me to that point. If you'd like to see a complete list of a layer's features, click on the three dots to the right of the layer name and click view and attribute table. Now I can see all the farms and their attribute information in a listed table view. In the table, you can highlight certain features by clicking to the left of the row. This will also highlight that point on the map. You can select multiple features by holding shift or the control key on your keyboard. To clear the selection, click here. In the table, you also have the option to filter the layer or to download the table as a comma separated variable or CSV file. To collapse the attribute table, just click on this tab on top or you can X out of the tab here. To the left of the layer list is the legend. Right now, because we just have the farms layer turned on, we'll just see farms in the legend, but it will change as we activate new layers. So say for example, I'm interested in seeing the location of grocery stores in relation to food insecure areas. So first I'm gonna find my retail food stores in my food and farming layer list. So that's right here. And then I'm interested in food insecurity, which I can find under equity and access. And the layer I'm interested in is going to be under this USDA food access research atlas. So you'll see that the layer is turned on, but there's nothing on the map related to it. What you have to do is click on the name to expand the layer and you'll see a bunch of sub layers. So I'm gonna turn on this fourth option here. 
And to get a better view of this, let's zoom into an area. And now we can see that these layers are populated on the legend. The next map feature that I'm going to go over is the filter tool. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to turn on the emergency food layer. So if I go to my legend, I can see that this gives me a list of food pantries and community meal programs slash soup kitchens in the Hudson Valley. But say I'm just interested in looking at the food pantries. So I'm gonna to go to the filter tool here. And as you can see, there are a few preset filters. So to see them in more detail, you need to expand the filters by clicking on the arrow to the left of the layer name. So I've located emergency food, expanded it, and if I see my options under type, I see the community meal programs, food pantries. I just want to see food pantries, so click it. As you can see, nothing has changed, and that's because we haven't activated the filter. To do that, you have to click on this button to the right. So now I'm just looking at food pantries, and we can change that to just be the community meal programs or soup kitchens. To deactivate the filter, just click on the green button again. You also have the option to create a custom filter. So locate the three dots on the bottom right corner here. And this actually gives us three options. So we can turn off all the filters or reset all the filters. But I'm interested in creating a custom filter. That's this option here. And for the layer, I'm gonna select again, our emergency food layer, which I have activated on the map and click Add Expression. Say I'm just interested in looking at emergency food programs in Ulster County. So in this first dropdown, I'm gonna change name to county, keep is as it is, and then I can type in Ulster here. And now you can see that the selection is filtered down to just emergency food programs in Ulster County. In addition to typing in Ulster, what I can do is click on this gear to the right and click on unique. And that's going to populate the list with all the different counties. So instead of typing in Ulster, I can select Ulster here and that will give us the same selection. To turn off the custom filter, again, just click on this green button here. The next tool allows you to see a list of nearby points within a set radius. So the first thing you need to do is set your radius. Um, I'm going to leave it at the preset 5 miles, but you can expand it to up to 25. The next step is to pinpoint a location, and you can do this in one of three ways. The first is to type in an address into the address bar. The second is to have the app find your current location, or you can drop a pin. So for this demonstration, I'm going to drop a pin in a random location. And as you can see, we now have a list of all the points that are within this five mile radius. And if you click on any of these, you'll see that points attribute information. And this widget also allows you to find directions from your set pin to the point of interest. To go back, you can just click the next map feature is the measurement tool. Using this measurement tool, you can calculate a certain area. Double click to finish. You can calculate a distance. Or you can find a coordinate location. You can change your units here. This last tool allows you to add your own data to the map. More detailed instructions for how to use the Add Data tool will be linked in the description, but for now, I will give a brief overview. You can add your own data to the map in one of three ways. The first is via the ArcGIS online portal. So if you know of any publicly available data sets in the portal, you can type in your keywords here and add it to the map as so. The next way to add your own data is via a URL. Here you can see the acceptable URL types, along with some sample URLs to guide you. And you would just copy and paste the URL here and click add. The last way to add your own data to the map is by uploading your own file. 
If you click the question mark here, you can see a list of acceptable file types. Any layers you add are visible here, click layers, and they're also available in the layer list right here. To remove the layers, again, go here and just click the trash symbol and go back. And that is all the map tools. So thank you for using the Hudson Valley Regional Food System map. We hope you enjoy exploring the, our regional food system.